you guys are having an amazing week so far. I'm going to ask me anything. Um, some of you guys already posted some questions, but as you're popping on here, if you have a question, absolutely drop it in the comments. I'm going to answer as many as I can. Um, how many do I have here? I have six here that I'm going to answer. And like you say, if you're popping on, feel free. Hey, Christy, feel free to drop your comments in or your questions in the comment section, and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, you'll notice, like I got the bun, I'm rocking the bun. Hi, Brooke. Hi, Corey. I am going on a big trip tomorrow morning, like first thing. Hi, Shannon. I'm going to Boise. Hey, Brandy. I have never been to Boise, but I feel like most of my friends live in Boise, which is really weird. Um, but you know, that's like the life of an entrepreneur, right? You make all these friends, and they're online, and you forge these relationships. The next thing you know, you're flying to Boise for four days. So that's what I'm doing tomorrow. So I'm like, I'm packing. I gotta like do all my, you know, your pre-trip stuff that you have to do. And this is my first trip that I'm using a carry-on instead of a full piece of luggage. So like, pray for me. <laughs> okay, so hey, Sarah. I'm gonna dive right into these questions. And again, if you're popping on and you have a question, feel free to drop it in the comments. So Dana asked me, what do I do for self-care? Hey, Bianca, you guys, self-care, everyone thinks that self-care is like, oh, you know, you have to go get your nails done or go get a massage or like go have a spa day. Okay, those are great things for self-care. I'm not going to deny that. And if that's what you like to do, amazing. Good for you. Go do it. But that being said, you need to show yourself self-care every day. And self-care can be anything from spending 15 minutes, you know, reading a personal development book that you're liking, doing some positive affirmations. Maybe you just want to have like a nice hot bath, a cup of tea by yourself. 20 minutes without social media, without being attached to an electronic device. Self-care is a daily act that we need to give ourselves. Hey, Shannon. It can also be as easy as removing toxic people from your life. That is a form of self-care. If it's good for your mental health, then that is self-care. Okay? So anything anything like that. But of course, who doesn't love going to the spa once in a while? But it's those daily practices, you guys. Just showing yourself a little bit of grace, showing yourself a little bit of love that people overlook and think, well, that's not really self-care. But it is because, you know, they always say when you get on a plane, you know, if the plane starts going down, put your oxygen mask on first and then help those around you. And there's a reason for that. You can't help people if you're like, suffocating because you never put your oxygen mask on and you put yourself last. And you know, I shared a few weeks ago inside this group, a hi Nicole, a video that I had done last year and it was about being a water pitcher. So like really quickly, I, I saw this um, when I was at a convention for my network marketing company, it was last September. And essentially, you have to look at yourself as, hey, Dana, as a water pitcher, okay? And there's constantly water flowing into you, okay? And you have all these little cups around you. And like one cup is your kids, and one cup is your husband or your wife. One cup is your job, your friends, you know, your, your side hustle, the business you're trying to grow, the committees that you're on. You know, all these cups are around you, and you're this big glass pitcher, pitcher and water's flowing into you, okay? So you tilt forward to start pouring into the little cups. You tilt yourself forward to pour some into your kid's cup. You pour into your spouse. Hi, Miranda. You pour some into your job and your friends, and you're constantly leaning over. But every time you lean over, you know, that water that was pouring into you, it's obviously not pouring into you because now you're over here. And the more you're pouring, 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 you know, your, your water level is being depleted because you're never getting straightened back up to get filled up again. So eventually you're going to be completely empty. And what happens when you have a vase, like a, a pitcher, a water pitcher that's made of glass, hi Brandy, it topples over, it'll topple over and it'll break. Well, that's you. 
But if you focus on yourself and you put yourself first and you love yourself first and that water's flowing into you, what's going to happen if that water's just flowing into you and you don't stop moving? Hi, Julie. It's eventually going to start overflowing and it has no, hey, Dana, I'm talking about your question right now. It has no other, it has to, if it's spilling out of you, if it's pouring out of you, it has no other option than to start filling up the things around you. This overflow will automatically just start pouring out and filling up all the cups that are around you. So instead of leaning yourself over to pour yourself into everybody else, give yourself that self-care. Let that water flow into you so it can flow out of you and into the others. Okay, so Dana, I hope that answered your question. Hey, Debbie, Alexander asked me a question about failure. And I really enjoyed this. He asked me, how do I embrace failure? And this kind of ties in with Brian's question because Brian asked me about people who have failed their mindset versus people who are successful in their mindset. Hi, Bonnie. It's not about failing, you guys. It's about are you going to quit or not? The people that are successful in life have never quit. They never give up on themselves. Hi, Alicia. They never give up on themselves. They are always, always, always showing up, even when it's hard, even when it sucks, even when they don't want to. And that's what makes them successful. People look at other people and go, oh my goodness, that person is an overnight success. Wow, I wonder what they did. No one sees the hard work and the years of getting knocked down and the determination and the work that they put in, they only see the success. So if you are going to quit, you will fail, of course. But I'll tell you my friends, statistically, it is impossible for you to just fail forever if you keep showing up. If you keep showing up, you put in the work years after years sometimes it takes, you will find success because every time you fail, that's an opportunity to go, okay, this didn't go well. <laughs> what happened though? What did go well out of this whole thing? What didn't go well? Why didn't it go well? How can I learn from this and do it better the next time? And then you do it again. And then you do it again. And then you do it again. Every time you fail, you've learned something whether it's about yourself, whether it's about your business, whether it's about your ideal client, whether it's about the market, your offer, it doesn't matter. It's always an opportunity to learn. So you can pick up your ball and say, this was crap and I'm going home. I don't want to play anymore. I, my feelings are hurt and I don't want, like, I don't like this. I'm leaving. Or you can say, okay, I got to keep going. I'm going to keep going. So for me, when I have faced failures, which I have, I still face failures all the time, you guys. Just because I'm sitting in here coaching you guys doesn't mean that my life is perfect. Doesn't mean that I never get rejected. Doesn't mean that, you know, things don't happen. That's just life. You know, you can't be the perfect person for everyone. You can't be, you know, the saying, you could be the ripest, juiciest peach in all the world. There are still people that don't like peaches. Okay. That doesn't mean I'm going to stop being a peach. That doesn't mean I'm going to dye myself and pretend I'm a plum. Like you have to keep going. Hi, Laura. Hey, Rachel. So every time I have failed, because I am so dedicated and so determined to create the life that I'm trying to live, be the coach that I want to be, help the people that I want to help, and really be able to help them, not just say I can help them, but I've been through the trenches I embrace those failures as learning opportunities. You know, I say all the time, I'm a scientist by nature. So for me, analyzing what happened here, how can I be better? And every time you fail, this is part of your story, you guys. This is part of your journey and this is what makes you relatable. There is not a person on the planet who woke up one day, said, you know what, I'm going to make a million dollars today and I'm going to coach Tony Robbins and just done it. 
<laughs> like it takes a lot of dedication. It takes a lot of failure. Every time you hit a wall, every time you fail at something but keep moving forward, you're inspiring other people. As much as I feel like I'm failing, my son put me down as his hero in his poster for show and tell. Okay, Dana, exactly. That's beautiful. Crying face, absolutely. Because, you know, my kids are a huge reason why I do. Hi, Tyler. They're a huge reason why I do what I do. Okay. I, I talked before about um, looking at our moms. You know, like I'm in my 30s. Our moms... A lot of us who are, you know, in my in my age group could probably say my mom stayed at home. My mom was a stay-at-home mom. Maybe she babysat kids. My mom babysat kids like in our house. And that was how she brought in a little bit of extra money. But she was around. And for me in my like community, that was normal. All the moms were home. Okay. And I look at these women who are like my mom's age or a little bit older who say things like, you know, I just did what I did, what I could for my kids. I was there for my kids. I did whatever jobs I could to contribute to the home, but I didn't pursue my dreams. I didn't pursue my passions. I just was a wife and a mom. And it's very clear that a lot of women that are a little bit older did not pursue their passions, did not do what lit them on fire. They just did whatever they needed to do. And now later in life, they are trying to figure out what lights me up? What is my passion? What sets my soul on fire? What do I wish that I always did, but I never did because I put everybody else before me. And I, some of us are still doing that right now. And I get that for me. When I started getting this calling on my heart, I thought to myself, I can hide from this and wait until my kids are grown and then pursue this when I'm not needed that way. And I'll just keep going down the path that I was going with investments and I'll just, I'll worry about this like in like 15 years. Or I can embrace this and let my kids see it. And I wanted my kids to see it. I wanted my sons to go, like, my mom is a badass. When we were kids, she was working all the time. She was going on these, like, retreats and workshops. And she was constantly helping other people. And she was coaching the ladies. That's what they always say. Are you coaching the ladies, mom? <laughs> what I do. I want them to see when they're older, a strong, independent, fierce woman and go, you know what? I'm not going to be scared of you. I'm not going to be intimidated by you. You remind me of my mom. So like you want to partner up with me? I got you. I want you to go for your things. I want you to reach for your goals. I want you to do what lights you up. I can support you because I watched my dad do it with my mom and I know what my mom did. And I want my daughter to have that same experience, but on the flip side to go, you know what? I can break all the rules. I can do all the hard things. I can be whatever I want to be because I watched my mom do this. I watched her struggle. I watched her cry. I watched her succeed. I saw her in months where she didn't make a dime. I saw her in months where she made five figures in one month. I've seen my mom do all the things and I know I can do all the things. So for me, I did not want to be someone who waited until my kids were gone. I wanted to do this now. And in saying all of that, I want my kids to see me go through my failures and come out on top and have my wins and celebrate with them because I want them to know what, what it's all about. I want them to have a healthy appreciation for what it's like to go after the things you want because I feel like our generation is raising kids 
that are going to completely change the world. You know, it's not going to be, well, I went to school for this because my dad wanted me to, or I joined the family business because I had to. Like, no, our kids are going to change the world. And I want them to see their mom do that in a tiny corner of the world. So that is how I embrace failure. I remind myself that I have little people looking and I remind myself that I was called to so much more and I'm not stopping. <laughs> the second you quit is the second you fail. As long as you keep failing forward, hi Amanda, you have not failed. You are succeeding. So that's, that's my two cents on that. <laughs> hey, Brian. Um, Crystal asked me a question about pricing service packages. So ultimately, this is something that I would do with my like clients, like on like a one to one or a very small group basis, because pricing and packages are not a cookie cutter thing. It's not like, well, Oh, Brittany, you've been coaching for two years and you've had over a hundred one-on-one -on -one clients in less than a year. So, you know, you should charge this much money. Like, no, that's not how it is. But we need to look at things like, who are you? What are you doing? What are you offering? Who are you serving? What are the results you can give them, your people? And like, like where you are, how much experience you have, things like that. And then you can kind of start saying, okay, like a one hour session with you should be about this much. A 21 day challenge with you should be about this much. You want to create uh, some content that you want to sell? Okay, what have you created? Or what can you create? And how much can we sell this for that looks good because there's psychology behind pricing, okay? People want to spend like the right amount of money. People are very strange when it comes to money. You know, they they don't want to spend too much on some things, but don't mind spending a lot on other things. So there's like a whole a whole system that you kind of have to work through. And it does come down to experience. So like a little rule of thumb for you guys, for those of you who are kind of starting out, get the experience. Don't do it for free. <laughs> get the experience. What are you going to offer? Are you going to offer a one, one hour coaching session? Are you going to offer my first, my first package was three 30 minute sessions over a three month period. So once a month, they got a 30 minute session with me. And when I first started, after I did the whole uh, coaching people for free. See, I learned. That sucked. I failed at that. I learned. And now I'm here to tell you guys don't do that. But based on my experiences and how much I have already invested in myself, because I am a heavy investor. You guys know this. I talk about this. I've invested all the money <laughs> into learning the stuff, which makes me more valuable. So when I was working with my coach back in the day, when I first started this, which like I say, it was over a year ago. Now I was charging $247 for those three 30 minute sessions over three months. That was me. Someone else who's had more experience could charge more. Someone who has had less experience and invested less would need to charge less. You also need to get out there and just, just start getting the clients. You know, I tasked you guys like two weeks ago, just go out there own it name it and claim it i am a what are you a life coach are you a success coach are you like the skincare queen of the south are you like the mermaid hair go-to girl like who are you own it post it on your social media you guys i'm naming and claiming this is who i am okay and i'm looking for three to five people you pick three to five people to try my products, to join my team, to work with me in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And you have to figure out what the results are gonna be. What can you, why am I picking you? What are you gonna do for me? 
my whole thing, I help people with their mindset. I help people manifest. I can help you scale your business to six to seven figures based on mindset and manifestation. That's the results I can get you. I know this because I've already done it. I've done it for my husband. I'm doing it for myself. I've done it for other people. Mindset, manifestation, okay? So what are the results you can get? If you don't know, okay, and I did, like I said, I talked about this like two weeks ago. If you don't know what your thing is, just go start getting clients. Be real general, real open, because the way people talk to you and what they think that they want to talk to you about, you're going to quickly learn, I hate this. I don't like talking about this at all. This I love talking about. I could talk about that for hours, which for me was mindset, was manifestation, affirmations, affirmations. Everybody's different. Find your niche. Find your thing that you like talking about. And once you've got your three to five people and they've paid you and you figured out, I really recommend doing multiple sessions with people because you can work through one hour. If you just do one hour, then you can go, okay, well, here's my advice to you. See you later. Hire me for another hour. If you can get them in a system, like in a, a situation where, okay, I have to talk to her again or him again in a couple of weeks. I can work on the homework that I've been given and then we can talk about my results and what happened and I can get new homework from this person. So I really recommend something like that. Once you've got your three to five, you get testimonials from those three to five, you can raise your price. Okay, at that point you can raise your price because now you've got something. You know the results you can give to somebody. You have testimonials from people, which how people talk about you is so important. People want to know what other people think. We cannot pretend that we never ever look at the reviews when we buy something online because we do. Okay, so go out there, you guys. Name and claim it. I'm doing this. I'm looking for this. You're going to get an extra directory rate in lieu of a testimonial. And then you're going to raise your price. And then you're going to keep doing that. Okay? But again, depending on what your program is, depending on what your thing is, what are you offering? What are your results? What are the services that you're doing? This is something that really needs to be a discussion so that I can get to know you better and give my experience on what your prices should be and when you should raise them and things like that and what you should raise them to and what's reasonable and things like that. So Crystal, I hope that answered your question. Lily asked me a question about lead pages and freebies. Okay. My little guy just waved to me. <laughs> um, Lily, freebies need to be something that people really want. They need to be sexy. They need to be something that people can implement like right away. And you know, you have to put yourself in the shoes of your ideal client. So go back to that ideal client dating profile and say, if I was this person, which let's face it, nine times out of 10, our ideal client is us like a year or two ago, maybe even six months ago. What would you have wanted? from someone like you what would you hope to be like oh my goodness if I if I saw this offer I would be like oh my goodness take my email take my first child like I really want to have this free thing it's going to teach me something it's going to give me huge value you know you don't want to sell a cow okay like don't give it all away for free but it has to give you huge value it has to give them results they have to want to have it has to be sexy okay and this is like whatever your thing is like you can make an ebook in canva you can make a worksheet in canva you can make this stuff in like microsoft word and then save it as a pdf if you want like it does not have to be super fancy you can go on fiverr and find someone to like graphic it up for you it doesn't need to be a whole thing but it just needs to really talk to your audience what would your ideal client want Okay, and 
Eva. Looking for one action step to get going forward. Okay. This is a very vague question because I don't know what you're trying to go forward with, but that's okay. If you really look at your business or your relationships or your life and this thing that you're stuck on and you want to move forward, you probably already know deep down a couple of things that you should be doing. If you should, if you're trying to grow your business, you probably know that you should be going live on Facebook. You probably know that you should be posting. I did a whole, a whole Facebook optimization training, how to make your profile look good, not sharing shared things, posting content daily, one in four, talking about your business. You guys, you need to sell every day. Are you having conversations with people? Are you putting yourself out there? Any of these things will start moving you forward. It's so good, you guys. It's so good that you're in here. You're soaking up what I'm giving you. You're reading the books. You're listening to the podcast. You're doing these things, okay? It's amazing. Do it. Do it every day. Schedule time to do it every day. But there comes a point when you are just busy bodying yourself. You have to start implementing. Good job, Dana. She's gone live six times. You have to start implementing the stuff you're learning. Otherwise, you're just busy bodying yourself. You're not stepping out. You're not doing the action steps. You can't just wish that it's going to come to you. Okay. Yeah, I talk about manifestation. Manifestation, you can't just manifest a million dollars while laying on your couch, never leaving, only ordering pizza, never talking to anybody. Like, it's just not going to happen. You have to take what you're learning and start putting it out into the world. Start putting it into action. Okay? Put yourself out there. This group, coaches, leaders, entrepreneurs, we're here because we want to serve. So even if you're not pushing your products, you know, whatever it is, if you can just serve the people, that is the best action step to move forward. Just start showing people what you've learned, implementing the things that you have learned, and you will start moving forward in your business. And like I said, you already know deep down, deep inside your guts, you know, I should be doing this. I should be posting. I should be going live. I should be drinking water instead of pop when I go to the fridge. I should be eating a salad instead of a burger at lunch. I should be telling my husband I love him instead of ripping his face off when he comes home because he didn't put, take the garbage out. I should be whatever. Whatever it is for you, you know deep down what these things are. I think that you're asking me to just verify that for you. This is your verification. Whatever you're feeling deep down that you should be doing, you know. Oh, if I just did this thing. I know you're holding back. It's the fear. I get it. I know you're holding back. I'm giving you permission right now to let go of the fear that action step that you're holding on to that you're afraid of doing is the right one because if it wasn't the right one you wouldn't be afraid of it and all good things are on the other side of fear so i encourage you to do it all right you guys i don't see any questions coming in comments yes questions no so that's it i got i got these banged out and it was so much fun so <sighs> I honestly will probably not be live again because like I'm leaving the country I'm in Canada I'm going to the states I'm going international I leave tomorrow I'm not back until Saturday after midnight and I probably won't come on Sunday because I'm just gonna be tired and I'm gonna want to hang out with my crew so I'll be, I'll be posting obviously in the group every day still. Thank you, Trina. 
encouraging you guys, please, you guys, share your wins. Share your struggles so that you can get positive feedback. People in this group, we have so many walks of life in this group. Did you see that there are 26 countries represented in this group? We have so many people, so many backgrounds, so many different views. We have people all over the spectrum. So what are you going through? Share it. This is a safe place. No one is going to judge you here. Okay? We talked about this. Trina, we talked about this. And we talked about this. Um, who else was asking about this? I forget. I'm sorry. Crystal. No one that is further ahead in their journey than you is going to judge you or criticize you or look down on you based on where you are and what you're doing. It just won't happen. This place is not for that. I will never tolerate, tolerate a bully, okay? So share your wins. We're here to cheer you on. Trina, I know you have amazing news. Feel free to share that, girl. Share in what you're going through. Ask for feedback. This is a safe place. This is a place to learn. This is a place to grow. I'm gonna serve you every freaking day. But if there are other people in this group that can also serve, who have something to say, obviously no selling, <laughs> no trying to sell your thing, like recruit to your team. That's not what this is about. This is about love, support, tribe environment, cheering each other on, encouraging, supporting. Like feel free to use this as a platform. There are well over a thousand people in here use them lean on them that's what we're here for okay so you guys have an amazing amazing night i'll be in and out you know while i'm traveling encouraging you guys all the good things um one last thing i did decide i'm sure you all saw my post i did decide to reopen the doors to my 12-week program and the reason being is that i had i had like a few of you join, pardon me, I had a few of you join the first time and that's awesome. I talked about hard, fast deadlines, okay? If you make a hard and fast deadline for your launch, your product, your service, whatever, it induces panic in people. There's a sense of urgency there. And I, I just had this, this pressing on my heart that there were people inside this group that were holding back from joining at the deadline that I that I put. And so I thought to myself, I said I wasn't gonna open the doors again until like it was January. And then, you know, 2019 was a little bit crazy energetically, but 2020 is supposed to be bang on, like amazing. People are gonna have these huge, there's a huge like positive energy, like influx that's going to happen. Like I'm, I'm into the energies, but you guys know what I mean. Like you look back on a year and you're like, what the f happened? That year was a mess. I felt like everything was weird. 2020 is supposed to be awesome. And like, what a better time to like kick freaking ass in your business than the start of a brand new year. So I thought, okay, well, what if I open the doors again, but I just don't start it until January and then I thought, well, that's not really fair because what if there are people out there who want to kick ass like right now and not like at the end of March? Because if I don't open the doors till January, it's 12 weeks, which is three months, so all of January, all of February, all of March. So I thought, well, son of a gun. So I just really, <laughs> I'm breaking the rules. And you know what? Maybe this is an instance where it's a total failure. You know, maybe you guys will go, well, okay, she opened the doors. She left the doors open for like a month and a half, two months, month and a half. And I can come back to you guys and say, never do that. Don't do it. It was a waste. Nobody signed up. Like that was crazy. Don't do it. But I just had this pressing on my heart to break the rules. No urgency. I mean, I mean, I'm going <laughs> to, I am going to close them in December. Um, so that the people that have joined, I can really focus on them. But I, like I say, I just had this pressing on my heart that there are people out there 
that are still having reservations. And I get that. It's a scary thing to invest in yourself. It's a scary thing to go, okay, I'm going to put all of this into her hands and I'm just going to hope and pray, you know, on a wing and a prayer that her and I are going to pull this out of our asses, right? Pardon my French. I get, I get it. I get it. I've done it. I've done it a ton of times. But if you're having those reservations, I didn't want people to go, ah, have you ever been there? You just like, I held back, I held back. And then the deadline came and went. And then like, now I'm regretting it. Like, shit, I should have done that. Why didn't I do that? And now I can't for like two more months. And I don't want my business to stay struggling backsliding for the next two months I wanted to start changing something's got to give here so I thought I'm gonna break the rules just see what happens it's a test <laughs> I'm testing everything out breaking the rules the doors are open the doors are open if you join today on Monday you will start week one whatever day you join the next Monday will be week one for you unless you join like really late on a Sunday night because like I'm in my own time zone over here some of you guys is still like afternoon it's completely darkness it's almost time for my kids to go to bed so if it's like late on a Sunday you might not catch that week one email on the Monday but I'll do my best to get everybody in so that the next Monday they're in you get in the next small group coaching session you're in you start getting the the materials you start getting the videos you start getting the trainings you start getting access to me and we can make a positive change for your business for your life for 2020 so it's a test has it ever been done before i don't know i've never seen it maybe it goes well maybe it doesn't i don't know we'll see but i just i really felt that i really felt that i should do that and just leave it and just see what happens and if people jump in, great. And if I learn that the hard and fast deadline is like basically a law and it shouldn't be broken, I'll tell you guys, now you've learned. Over a thousand of you in here, everybody learned. <laughs> All right, you guys, have an amazing day. I'll see you throughout this week. And Sunday, I'll be um, sharing my training schedule for next week. I got my first small group coaching with the people that are already in the ignite program we're gonna have our first session on tuesday next tuesday so i'm super pumped about that and uh, keep inviting your friends this is super exciting i've got two book options for the person that invites the most people and then don't forget like now that we're over a thousand like 1500 is like a small hop skip and a jump i've got a 50 dollar amazon gift card coming to someone when we hit 1500 so that's fantastic all right guys enjoy the rest of your day enjoy the rest of your week wish me safe travels i'll be checking in with you guys have a great day